Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be sharing the four tactics that you can use to catch walleyes right now and through the summer months. We're gonna be hopping in the boat with Will Pop and Fuss and he's gonna break down those tactics for you. But first things first, I thought it would be a good idea to kind of lay some groundwork of where we're gonna be finding and targeting walleyes this time of year because I think that will help you understand a little bit more why we're using the tactics we're using. We're kind of getting into the midsummer patterns now. Uh, we're nearing the end of June here, water temps are rising, we're getting to that upper 60s to lower mid 70s range. Uh, the fish, you know, kind of been on the shallow flats, you know, then the weeds. Um, most of them are starting to move deeper towards those mid lake structures, mid lake reefs, stuff like that, deeper humps. But there's always going to be fish in the weeds too. But the big thing this time of year is they are everywhere. So I mean, there's fish shallow, there's fish deep, rocks, weeds, sand, everywhere. So you kind of got to have a whole lot of, in your arsenal because you never know exactly what's going to happen that day. So if the walleyes truly can be anywhere in the lake this time of year, whether it's shallow, deep, or somewhere in between, then I think the next logical question is going to be, where do you start? And Will is going to answer that question right now. The biggest thing I look for this time of year is mostly weed lines because it seems that when you find fish in the weeds, they're going to be the most active just because there's a lot of bait around, uh, there's places for everything to hide. It just seems to be the best spot to start. Now on the topic of weeds, we're going to jump into the first tactic that Will likes to use to catch walleyes this time of year. And this particular tactic happens to be great for pulling walleyes out of the weeds. So when I'm targeting weed lines or targeting fish in the weeds, I'm going to be having a, probably about an 8 ounce bullet sinker. I'm going to have about a 6 foot snell down to number 4 hook. I'm going to be throwing either a crawler on there or a leech on there. I want to be able to get that bait up above the weeds enough that I can pull it through and not be snagging in the weeds, but still have it low enough to those fish are going to see them. So a lot of times I'll have my crawler, I'll take a worm blower and blow it up. Otherwise I'll be pulling the leech, but I'll be making sure I have you know that constant speed of probably 0.9 to 1 2 just to make sure I get it up and I can keep it away from those pesky panfish like perch and sunfish that I like to steal your baits all the time so that we can get past those but those walleyes are going to be able to keep up. So with this rig when I'm dragging it behind the hook boat I'm usually giving it a snap or two probably every every five seconds or so just kind of snapping it through the weeds to make sure I'm not hung up on anything and a lot of times those fish will be following it and if you get that little bit of a snap and you pull it away from their face they hit it that much harder. Now if number one was a real weed buster, number two is a tactic that you can use just about anywhere. So the next setup I got here is probably one of the best, probably hands down, one of the best tried and true walleye tickets, and that's a bobber rod. So you can use these things anywhere. You can use them in the weeds, you can use them in the rocks, you can use them in the sand, you can use them ice fishing, you can use them open water, you can use them wherever you want. It's probably hands down the best tool to have in your arsenal, whether you're walleye fishing, whether you're fishing perch, everything else, sound fish, anything. It's gonna be the number one option you're gonna have because it's gonna work any time of year. And when all else fails, I always end up going back to a bobber. Now let's get into some of the nitty gritty of how Will likes to use bobbers this time of year for walleyes. So one of the key things that I use in my bobber setup is I like to have a weighted bobber because I like to do a lot of power corking. So I'll be driving around marking fish, whether I'm in the weeds or on the edge or if I'm out deep, I can mark fish on structure. I want to be able to pitch that bobber right at those fish behind the boat and make sure I'm right in their face. Because if I'm not right in their face, if I'm a couple feet off, a lot of times those fish aren't going to eat. So I want to be able to make sure I get it right in front of their face every time and I'm making an accurate cast and making sure I get that line down there fast. Now one of the biggest debates when it comes to bobber fishing is whether you should use a jig or just a plain hook. And Will's going to answer that question right now from his personal experience. On the business end of things, I like to use a number four plain hook. Some guys like using jigs, some guys like using plain hooks. I just like using plain hooks myself just because if I have my leash swimming on there, I like to hook it wacky style to give a little bit of extra action down there so that leech can actually pick up that hook enough and I can move it all sorts side to side. I've got my split shots just a, about a foot and a half above my hook. I've got a three foot lead and that leech is going to be able to swim all the way around and get those fish to come in. Whereas a jig it's just going to sit straight down there. If they're eating it good a jig's definitely a way to go but if they're a little bit more finicky use a plain hook so that leech just got just a little bit more action and it's going to get more bites every time. Bobbers aren't just for little kids chasing panfish. 
They are an extremely effective and versatile way to catch walleyes during the summer months. And it's honestly one of those tactics that when the bite is tough and they're not biting anything else, they might bite a bobber. So make sure you always have one tied up somewhere in your boat because it might be a day saver. So now we're gonna move over to number three, Will's third go-to presentation for catching walleyes during the summer months. So this rig is probably one of my favorite rigs. Don't tell anybody, it's probably one of my top favorites. It's my big minnow rig. So what I've got here is I've got a one ounce sinker. I've got about a three foot snell down to a one odd hook. So what I'm pulling with these, I'm pulling, you know, creek chubs, I'm pulling red tails, big sucker minnows. And why I throw a one ounce weight on there is because I like to sit up in the front, under my graph, make sure I have that weight right in that fish's face so I know that minnow is gonna be right in front of their nose. I only use like a three foot snell just so I can keep that minnow down, keep it right on them, and I know I'm right there. And a lot of times those fish, they're gonna sit there and just look at it, they're gonna chase it. And if that minnow is moving away too fast, a lot of times they're lazy this time of year and they're not gonna eat it. So the closer I can keep it to that fish's face for as long as I can, a lot of times you're gonna get more bites that way. All right, now it's time for number four, Will's last go-to tactic for chasing summertime walleyes. Last but simply not least is the puppet minnow rig. I like to throw this around a lot if you're fishing sand flats, you know, edge of rock piles, deeper structure, shallow sand, wind blowing stuff. You know, if you really want to make a run at it, you know, cover a lot of water, you know, you're gonna get, a, you're not gonna probably get as many bites, but you're definitely gonna be able to tell if the fish are active if they're hitting these things, or even if they're not active, sometimes you get a reactive strike and you get one out of a random school to eat. It's kind of a last resort kind of bait nowadays just because they seem to be you know adapting to it a little bit more but you can still get plenty of fish on them and you can definitely get them going pretty fast if you get on a good window. Now when you're ripping puppet minnows for walleyes this time of year there's really two ways that you want to do it and Will is going to explain that right now. So two different ways that I work this bait. First is going to be vertical. Most of the time the only time I'd be doing vertical is if I'm deep like let's say you know deeper than 20 feet just so I can get on top of that school you know the fish aren't going to get spooked when you're sitting on top of them. Um, otherwise if you're fishing shallow you know shallower than 15 feet I'm going to be casting just because I can get a better roll out of it. Most of these baits are going to dive and they're going to roll more if you get more of an action when you're casting than just vertical and they seem to like it a lot better because a lot of times they'll nip at it and chase it. So most of the time you're gonna get bit a lot more when you're casting. And here's a quick run through on how Will likes to work the bait. So when I'm casting, I'm just gonna cast it out. I don't wanna make too far of a cast because if I hook one way at the end of the cast, I have that much farther to get these hooks to rip out of their mouth. So I'm gonna make shorter casts. I'm gonna rip it, let it hit bottom, rip it, let it hit bottom. And most of those times those fish are gonna hit it on the bottom, but other times they're gonna eat it right on the fall. All right, now as we wrap things up here, Will is gonna leave you with one last tip that you can use to catch more walleyes this time of year, and it's a really important one, honestly, not only for this time of year, but all season long. One of the biggest mistakes I see this time of year is guys not using their electronics to their full advantage. It's, it's tough to get your mind to wrap around it, but side imaging is probably one of your best tools that you can use, and it's probably one of the most affordable. It's just, it's unbelievable what you can see out on the side of your boat. You can see schools of fish, you can see where these little rock piles are, you can see the transition lines from rock to sand, rock to mud, anything like that. Once you can get that dialed in, you can tell how many fish are sitting there, if they're gonna eat, and how many you're gonna catch. Because you can see exactly how many fish are out there at what range, know exactly where you need to cast, and it's definitely gonna help you a lot in the long run. Now I know learning new technology can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it's totally worth it because you're gonna find fish a lot faster and the faster you find fish, the more fish you're gonna catch. It's science. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something. And one thing that I would love is if you'd go down into the comment sections below and let me know your go-to tactic for chasing walleyes during the summertime months. I'd love to read all your responses, get some feedback from you guys. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully you're enjoying the videos because we got more coming this summer. Stay tuned. We'll see you next time.